Welcome to the lesson on routes of access. In this video, we will discuss the intravenous and intraosseous routes of access. Historically, in ACLS, providers have administered drugs via the intravenous, or IV, or the endotracheal, or ET, route. ET absorption of drugs is poor, and optimal drug dosing is unknown. Therefore, the intraosseous or I.O. route is now preferred when IV access is not available. Let's review the priorities for each route of access. The peripheral IV is preferred for drug and fluid administration unless central line access is already available. Central line access is not necessary during most resuscitation attempts, as it may cause interruptions in CPR and complications during insertion. Placing a peripheral line does not require CPR interruption. If a drug is given via peripheral route of administration, then you should intravenously push bolus injection unless otherwise indicated. Flush with 20 milliliters of fluid or saline and or raise extremity for 10 to 20 seconds to enhance delivery of drug to circulation. When using peripheral IV route of administration, drugs can take up to two minutes or more to reach central circulation. The effect of medications given may not be seen until even longer. High quality CPR helps circulate these drugs and is an important part of resuscitation. The IO route is used to deliver drugs and fluid safely and effectively during resuscitation when IV access is not available. IO access can be used for all age groups, can be placed in less than one minute, and has more predictable absorption than the ET route. Keep in mind that any ACLS drug or fluid that can be administered intravenously can also be given intraosseously. This concludes our lesson on routes of access. Next, we will review pharmacological tools.